Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back as we continue on through day one here of the First Strike Close Qualifiers presented by Nerd Street Gamers. And let me introduce you to a case study known as Expectation versus Reality, also known as the Tinder Study, also known as Catfishing. Booyah. Look at that wonderful quaff. This is what it would look like with hair. Are you guys impressed? You better be. Joining me on the broadcast are two men with a full head of hair themselves. That's why I decided to don this wonderful wig, making sure that I'm not being shown up too much. It's the dual Alexes. We've got Van Silly and we've got Lex joining me on the show. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Do you, uh, what do you think? Is this a good look? Beautiful. Beautiful. You look great. Fantastic. <laughs> the man bun works for you. And I am I am happy to report you mentioned something about full head of hair. Uh, the bald stream earlier was really doing it for me, but you know, it is what it is. We're the boomers after all yeah. pushing over 30, right? You so know what? Eh, bald here soon too. Speaking about boomers, but I think it seems as though that it seems to affect you the most Lex because you're the only one sitting down. Fair. I mean, you guys have your standing <laughs> desks. You're all fancy, keeping it healthy. I respect it, but, uh, I'm just here for the Valorant. Okay. Hell yeah. Not necessarily the man buns. <laughs> well, Speaking of Valorant, why don't we go ahead and take a look at our group that we're going to be covering in here in just a second. We're going to be jumping into our group B to cover Gen G versus Equinox. Gen G really looked good during the open qualifier. Uh, Van Silly, how how good did Gen G look? I mean, they were definitely showing up a lot of teams that we did not expect them to beat. For a team that just picked up Sean, and to see how good they were doing the NSG Open Qualifier for First Strike, they look really good. I mean, the win versus Xset, the win versus Sentinels, I know there's been some tweets around, it's like, were they really trying or not? I don't care. They looked really good at that point. Sean was popping off at the same time too. And when it comes down to you lost, you lost. It's not up to the opposite team as the reason why you lost, it's how you played. And, uh, you know, Sentinels didn't play it well, and Genji took advantage of it. When it came down to playing later on versus NVA TSM, it depends then what happens to Gen G. What kind of Gen G really appears in these tournaments? Because sometimes they come out hot out of the gates, then the next day, really cold. It goes back yeah. and forth, and I'm looking forward to see how that's going to be today. I think you're right. And and for Gen G, I, I think the Sentinel ma Sentinel Sentinels match and the little drama that we kind of touched on right there, uh, it's irrelevant to me. Because, you know, if you go back and you look at the statistics that, you know, this team... In comparison to prior events, you know, the introduction of Sean has just had a huge impact yep. in terms of their fragging power. And I, I can't wait to see them get tested more and more as we progress throughout this tournament. Starts right here. They got to come out hot against Equinox. And, uh, you know, it, it should be interesting. But I think this is Gen G's statement to make that this is, mm -hmm. this is a tournament where they're going to go deep. Well, we do have the map bands ready. That'll help us understand just what direction this series could potentially go. And we'll pull those up at the bottom. Gen G starts off with a ban on Bind. Then we've got a pick of Haven from Equinox. And we've got a pick of Ascent. That actually went the way of... Pretty sure that's Equinox Gen G. Is, that's that's gotta Gen be, G. That's Gen G's be. pick. Should okay, be Gen yeah. G that took Ascent. Correct. And then Gen G wins the coin flip, and they get their side selection on Split. Mm -hmm. uh, Alex, Lex, as a former player, you know, you're seeing the way the map pool is starting to shape up. Is it surprising to see a map like Bind or Haven so regularly banned? Why is it that teams are now favoring maps like Ascent and Split? I think Ascent and Split, like, people have kind of started to figure out those maps a little bit more. There, it wasn't entirely obvious, you know, when they were initially released, either by the community or pro teams, how to be playing those maps on attack and be effective, especially against, you know, we have agents like Cypher and Killjoy who just got some recent nerfs, but, you know, had a really strong impact in the games, especially in those maps in particular to kind of lock down bomb sites. Well, you don't have that comfort mm. anymore. And I think that, you know, to some degree for for the comfort on these maps, I mean, you, you're talking about Counter-Strike just a second ago. That was kind of the progression that we saw over the years in Counter-Strike as well, where, well, maybe the maps themselves aren't T-sided, but players and teams that are competing at the highest levels are always going to be pushing the envelope when it comes to whether or not it's an attack or defense-sided map. You know, I, I think it comes down to experience and, uh, and comfort level on the maps, kind of like you were touching on. And, I think Gen G has the advantage here, especially with Ascent. Definitely. Uh, this at the same time, I think at the same time when Sage got nerfed, it definitely shows that Split and Ascent were starting to get more and more picked. Yeah. I, I think Ascent in particular, like Gen G, I, I saw them at like 64% of a win rate. Uh, that map, if it goes to a map three, I just see Gen G, you know, being able to close it out there. But it's Equinox's map uh, to make a statement on as well. That's Can't it. count them out. That's it. So it looks like we're going to start things off. 
I thought we were going to go towards Haven first, but it looks like it's going to be the fly through with Ascent to start things off here. No, yeah, we're back on Haven. We're back on Haven. We're going to have Genji on the defender side and Equinox on the attacker side. And this, like you mentioned here, Lex, before, this, this is a big flex for Equinox so far. So I'm going to pass it to you. Well, I'm going to try to fix this real quick. Yeah, Equinox here. We have DXN, Cute Fat Boy, Decomp, Pancakes, and Mina. Mina, the jet player who's really been lighting up the statistics for, uh, for this Equinox side. I mean, these guys rely a lot on, on Mina to be getting these first bloods with Jet. And here on Haven, it, it's a comfortable Jet map for most teams. Win over there on the other side. Rocking the, uh, the mirror agent. That said, uh, poised to maybe have a C play right out the gate here. Three players stacked up towards long. Make that four. Apologies. Uh, and PL1 immediately getting the information off of his camera. Going to call the rotates in. Pushing out of the site is Jet. No contesting the site so far from Genji. Just opting to give it up and... Perhaps maybe a little bit of scouting info from the side of Equinox, knowing that the C-bomb site will be given up by Genji. Uh, or perhaps not. It's pure pe speculation on my part, but we have a peculiar situation now where it's a 5v5 yeah. retake. Yep. And the bomb is planted at C. Interesting one. So it's going to be a big thing to take one watch in that flank, but they're both getting picked off by Sean. We talked about it as well. Uh, uh, one one on Sean in the front kill again at the third one right now. So a two man flank going on, leaving only pancakes by himself for Equinox on a four versus one. Hidden right now at the cubby. Holy dear. As now he's looking for that trade for Sean, but it's going to be a, a 4K for him to start the star fragger for Gen G ever since they picked him up. And the meme has been Sean go frag, we follow. And that was definitely the case. I mean, we touched on it just, just before the pregame started. This guy is their X Factor. And for, for me, watching this Gen G squad, they have a lot of pedigree and a lot of experience coming from a Counter-Strike background. You expect this team to be competent, to be competitive, and definitely be doing the right things. But you you would put somebody like Sean in there, and suddenly he's coming, coming hard out the gates in a pistol round with a 4K. Excellent round from him. A clean round from Gen G. And, uh, you know, Equinox able to get the bomb plant. But not going to be buying into this round. Just going to keep their uh, their economy healthy and go for an A play. Right the gate. This is actually quite interesting. Went with four frenzies. Just because it's a rapid fire rate, you want to stick together on close quarters, close combat, and get that trade early. And the early trade Enemy they pack. did get. It's a four versus four. But the Sova drone has spotted enough here from Mikael, who's going to look for some shotgun oh, yeah. for that zero side, anyways. But it's wow. a perfect, it's a perfect pick rather that allows Q5 Boy to peek out and get the first frag. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a miscommunication there between Sean, but uh, the player on the A-bomb side that just got picked, I'm not quite sure who it was off the top of my head, but uh, Equinox basically just be able to reset off that pick. Mm -hmm. I mean, you put this into a, into a 4v3 situation on Haven, mind you, a three-bomb site map, and suddenly this Gen G round where it they had three players on the A-bomb site, it did not look free or accessible to Equinox whatsoever. And yet here we are, they have, they have a real opportunity to win this round now, but e -comp walking up here to the short finds one player, it's gonna be two on that bomb site. Players are there for Gen G, but it's not quite enough to uh, to fish out where the attack is really coming in for Equinox. Correct, because Equinox had that camera 30 seconds that left. So that if anybody was pushing forward, you could still use it to play for that rotate. So they want to stack the numbers towards the A side. But now this frenzy round coming in for Equinox is perfect for them towards C. Yes, they broke the trap wire. That's enough information, but maybe it's too little too late because the last two players are up against four. So it's going to be two players right now, GMD and Sean, and they're both coming from opposite directions. So it's going to be individual plays. We'll have to see if it pays off in their favor. Equinox on their end, they'll have a perfect crossfire setup, at least inside the site, while just letting the one pushing forward, playing the angle. So Sean's going to be the first one to contact. He gets the first easily traded out. Now Trapwire broken, the two versus one, and it, they know exactly he's coming in from long C. So GMD looking for that smoke. He looks back towards the logs, makes it a one versus one, but only surviving with three HP. He's going to let that go, and Equinox gets a perfect eco. Wow. Despite two fantastic reads out of Gen G, you mentioned that the Sova drone right at the beginning of the round basically blowing that strat up. I mean, you, you have no opportunity at that point to surprise anyone from Gen G, you would think. And yet, walking up the A long ramp to find a free kill on somebody with a back to you, that is an unacceptable death right there for Gen G. And unfortunately, it's going to cost them a free round coming off the back of the pistol round win. So now we have a 1 1 tie. You know, Equinox got to be feeling good about that for sure. But a few of those kills were free. I wonder if Genji just is like, hey, like that was a dumb round to lose. Uh, I, I think the composure will stay here, but this is an opening that Equinox is going to need to capitalize on here.
and to redeem on their there mistakes and are. looking for something aggressive towards B and C. So a double push towards long C to start, a double peek at B, but the first point of contact, once again, is going to be in that area. But there is somebody waiting there just at the bottom of C. As it comes through the smoke, it's Pancakes waiting for player one, looking for the second kill, but it's GMD with that Spectre that he saved on that previous round to even up the tally, but he's low on HP, which means now we're running into the side of A, but there's a perfect crossfire set up here. Headshot. They can get things done. Let's win with one. But it's quickly traded up by Q Fat Boy, and they've overrun and overcome the eighth site. Yeah, a nice Spike little stack planted. little setup coming out from Gen G. They're able to get a kill, but you know, Equinox doing a fantastic job of playing together, getting these trades and cleaning up the kills. So now it's a three on two situation where they're firmly in the bomb site. The bomb is planted, and for Gen G, you want to get as many kills as possible here. Yep. You want to continue to build up ultimates and keep the economy, of course, of Equinox moderated. I won't say in check at all, but. You know, another killer two here would be great. But it's also a, one of these situations where you're not going to win the round. You're just trying to, to find your own confidence. And Sean is absolutely feeling himself. It's off one onto the Sova. Mina cleans it up quickly. Poised to be 2 1. Equinox over Gen G. Nice round. Nice anti eco coming up from Equinox. And uh, you know what? That, that's a good sign moving forward on this match. And even then, you're getting three kills with the amount of weapons that you purchased for Gen G on that previous round. Of That's course, okay. GMD with that Spectre that he saved the rest, only investing in that 800 credits for that Sheriff. So that allows him to still get a full gun round into this round here. And they're forcing a buy onto DXN for Equinox, which would allow them to maybe reset it on into the next round should it. they win this one here for Gen G. So it starts off well for the Eco, for Gen G at least. But Equinox is looking very good since that anti-eco to start. So a two to one with them, looking to get some control towards the seaside grill. Yeah, almost looks like a mirror of what uh, occurred on Piss. So you have the Cypher lurking around towards mid, mm -hmm. and on, it looks like over. there's going to be Good a Genji defense Death already down. here. There's going to be a gunfight. A crossfire is there. Peacock coming out of, out of that long sea area. The ult falls. Mina's still holding strong on the bottom side. And he's going to get the second one of GMD, and suddenly is scrambling to get over to sea. Wow, excellent entries coming in from Mina. Those are the first bloods on that jet that we were talking about in pregame that I really expect Mina is going to be capitalizing for this Equinox side throughout. And wow, two big ones to start. And uh, if you're Gen G, man, silly, this is, that's a kind of a scary round here. This is first gun round. Oh, yeah. Right? You had the information, at least, that this was a real possibility of coming up along sea. You had a crossfire on site, and yet it all crumbles straight out the gate. That means Equinox is not only playing confident, but Gen G is starting off on the wrong foot in a map one that they need to win. 100%. Definitely using Decock for the run it back was that key play for Equinox to take control of C. That's why you actually didn't really see them split inside the, this garage side. They just wanted to play off, hey, let's throw the curveball through the cyber cage, uh, the cyber cage at long C. We know that's going to come. You have Jet no matter what, just in case, as Mina, that's going to dash through if the trap wire wasn't broken and also take coverage of the site. And dashing into his smoke allows him not to get blinded by a Curveball being thrown by their Phoenix of Decop, if they did be, which allowed him later on to just circle back and get that second kill onto GMD. So a super clean execution for Equinox at this point. And when you've lost two players so early into the round with no control for trades, the last three guys have no choice but to save because they're so far off on the rotation. And like I said, when it comes down to, again, playing the older patch here, Lex, where, you, where for example, area. if you had a Killjoy, oh, yeah. yeah. where you had a Cypher that died, the trap wires are down. But if they're still up at this point in this patch, it's still enough information. It makes it so hard for Equinox to play that retake. Absolutely. And I <laughs> mentioned that it's on an older patch. It's one of those things where I've been grinding this game so much over the last week or two. Oh, here we go. Push on to B very quickly. Mina already on site, planting the bomb. And Gen G obviously playing off the bomb site a little bit. Finds one onto her, and that's huge. G GMD to act actually make them pay yep. for getting out of that B bomb site so quickly. This is a 5v4 retake scenario for Gen G. Here it goes. They have so much as well, because you still have the paranoia for the retake for the front of the site. You have the Omen Dark Cover too, but there's a big fight coming in from Long C at the same time. It's Pancakes, and there you go. The smoke is already down. The paranoia is actually thrown from Equinox instead. Now they're pitching in against Gen G, but Player 1 still wins that fight. It's still ticking now, but they are dropping life wise. A huge retake for Gen G. A much needed round where they didn't need to lose that many players, and that was a successful, a successful retake in their end.
Yeah, I think that's a huge round for Genji to manage this half. It does two things. Not only are you getting your first solid gun round off of, the, off of an abysmal first gun round, let's be real. That was a... The, having to save with three players was smart, it was savvy, and it was definitely the right call. It sets them up into this next round like you were talking about. To have a full buy going into it, to be able to win that tells me two things. First of all, it means that the B play for Equinox is going to be something they're going to be afraid to go to later on. Yeah. And so Genji being able to kind of have a little bit of of perhaps comfort, maybe a little bit of breathing room to play towards the extremities of the map over at CNA, where Equinox has found success. You know, <laughs> Genji coming out hot with a Sean one tap of the smoke on a D cop. I say smoke, that was a cage, I believe. And uh, yep. wow, excellent kill to start things off by the four, Genji with the lead. The cage and a smoke three hunters. The first of front, it's gonna be a jet battle off versus off, but they both come out unscathed for now. But the wind is still looking for the angle. They both miss once, both miss once again, which now forces Win to fall back. There's already three players there for that stack, so they're walking into a trap here for Equinox. Yeah, this off play is gonna be so enjoyable to watch throughout this series, and we have Win posted here, waiting so patiently. Any moment now, the Omen, maybe the paranoia will be started, how we start this this sequence out, but a dry peak surely goes the way of win, right? That's yeah. one. Maybe even a cloud burst Resets. just to cover his angle. Yeah. But no now. refrag to come in. A little bit of damage, but not enough. And you know that they're setting up here for these smokes. It's about to be thrown up towards heaven. There is one, there's two for the spawn. But Wynn still continue to hold his ankle. So they went for another jiggle peek. It didn't pay off. They're trying to left. go for a body train, and it doesn't pay off as well. That means now a five versus one where I love Mina, just as Mina now, cannot even get the connection onto Sean. Sean pays, makes him pay the price, and it's a flawless round for Gen G. Sean and Win coming up huge, and, and those three up kills, that, that angle is so powerful for an operator, okay? I mean, that, that was clear just from, you know, our observer being able to hold that angle with him, that that is very clearly dangerous as all heck for Equinox to be able to just dry challenge that. So I think that means that, you know, if you're going to give a team like Genji the respect that they absolutely are showing that they deserve right now, mm -hmm. you know, expanding a little bit of utility to push this offer off, op, sorry, operator off the angle is, is at the very... Way least of what we should be worrying about doing on Equinox, not saving util for post plant like this should be the focal point for the rest of the matches can we set ourselves up well here we come fast c play got to find out coming out of the bomb site which has been mostly given up but win is up on the double stack in the back of the bomb site finds a free one on a decop he was not expecting it that will come out. It'll be another 5 on 4 retake for Gen G, who is doing a fantastic job of not giving up early kills to Equinox. This is great, actually, once again, for them to push aggressively inside that seaside. It, it is going to be a big gamble for Equinox. They have gun round, but you had somebody that was low, which is Mina, who also gets picked off by player one on that retake. Things are looking pristine for Gen G on this retake of the seaside. A 5 versus 2. We're going to go for a 4. The fuse actually, while well, we had the other four guys wow. watching each other's backs, and it's perfect. It's oh. wall, wow. another flawless round, and it, like I said, for Equinox, they had a very low buy, but at least Mina had the Blade Storm available too. So I was expecting something very aggressive on their sign here, Lex, and it paid off. They did get the spike plant, and that is that moment of salvation where they're going to be able to go for a gun round into this round here too. Uh, but aside from that, man, Genji looked very clean on that retake again. And they look like they're about to assert dominance here at mid, poised for a mid push. Three oh, players have stacked up at the front of B, expecting some heavy mid control coming out from them. So I'm going to save the thought that I have packed away, and this <laughs> action is sure to ensure, ensue in just a moment. Win will be posted on the angle, and here it is. The frag goes the way of Genji. Five four stars. Sean even gets a little bit of map control, but he gets scanned. He's going to need to forfeit this position. And this has got to be a little bit frustrating for Equinox, not just the entry frags going the way of Genji. But they've clearly done their homework. I'm yep. not sure if they have a coach in, in store or what, but they've clearly reviewed the demos and the, and the VODs of Gen.G and know how they play the bomb sites. They know that they can get free plants over at B and C if they want to. Yet, not being able to push for map control or get numbers early means that they're almost always facing a full strength Spike retake. Planted. And once again, 4v5 retake, where Equinox has suffered a pick early on in the round, found the free bomb site, and it's up to Gen.G to equalize, if not completely retake here. And, and this should be... No it should be a question of like, can we find kills? Can we can we hold with the utility that we have for Equinox? Get Mina lurking over there towards Plaza site. Doesn't find anything. Cute fat boy will be over here at DT. Gets challenged by Sean, who is still so rock solid. 
Pressing on the retake. Out of the window. PL1 dropping out of the ground. And Ryan going the way of Equinox. PL1 in a 1v1 with Mina. He's going to tap the bomb, holding for five. Mina knows, takes cash. And he gets the kill. Excellent round from Mina as well, finding three. Almost looking like another clean retake from Gen G, but Equinox steps up. Heck of a round there, and uh, well played. I love 4v4 the play for all tied up. Definitely Mina, as soon as he was spotted from that trap wire that he had to break towards that Bravo site, decide to fall all the way back towards sewers to assist his teammates on that one versus one in the end. Because then you see that for Gen G, they've been very comfortable retaking the A sign, and they know for Equinox that they're never going to go for a big flank because they exactly have Mina watching that flank just in case. So as everybody else is forming towards the defender spawn and towards heaven, it allows Equinox at that point to just watch the right angles and go for those trades, leaving it, they all did their job, right? You saw four immediate kills coming in from Equinox right after to leave it on that uh, one versus one in the end. So it was very well done from Equinox at that point. But because of the amount of rounds that we've won here for Gen G, they're still going to be looking good into this one. But the Operator in the hands of Mina, they're not trying to have him press four to get into the sights anymore. They're going to try to play the pickoff game with him at the helm. Here. This is such an interesting, I mean, obviously Gen G giving up the C-bomb site. From the start of Pistol, we knew that this is how they're going to be rolling. And it's not... Wow, kill up, putting a nice spam, spam kill onto D-Cop. And that's another 5v4 situation where they get the kill. They're not they're not worried about the plant coming out. And they're just biding their time. They're just waiting patiently. Sitting comfortably on their lead and waiting until all the pieces on the chessboard are in the right spot for the reason. The huge from the shadows coming out for this flank. He could even go for a shadow step across, but DXN is still offing right now towards the back of the site where he's trying to look back for this defender spawn rotate. So, him, he's going to beat himself out, but his team is just around the corner at the double stack just in case. Left Mina amazing. holding his wow. ground, going for a triple kill. It's up to GMD a little bit too slow on that rotate. So, it's a two versus one. They spot him. And now that he's just going to try to look for those exits, unless he wins this fight right away. The cute fat boy says no. And it's going to be now Equinox back in the lead into this match of 5-4. Yeah. And you know what? As that first view of three that we kind of witnessed early on, earlier on on this stream, we're finally starting to see a banger later on today. Yeah. I mean, these post plants, two rounds in a row, have been going the way of Equinox. And it certainly has not been, you know, razor thin That's both times. That round was very comfortable. He had a power position. I think it was DXN over there near back platform with yep. the operator. He fell, actually. He whiffed his first shot. Cute fat boy cleaned it up. But when you have secured the bomb site and you get first blood on the retake, you know, even if it's evening things up at a 4v4, it, it puts a lot of pressure on the defenders trying to retake to root out some of those power positions and having to dry peek an operator on the back corner of the site where there's two players there waiting for you. It's just not easy. Gen G yeah. feeling the pain in that case. Yeah, and uh, another free plant coming over here at B. I say free. I say free. But Decop again, the planner, whoever's in there first run, seems run, to be just run. getting picked off once after another. Equinox, can they hold and deliver another round? I like it. They're actually baiting out the Hunter Scurry at the same time. The retakes are to come through right after that. And the hat is out for player one. That means the big is going to score Equinox. All of them in the front of the site. GMD gets the first blood. Another solo in the world. They're going to rotate and find all three of them. And they all die instantly for Equinox. Another beautiful retake for Gen.G. I sound like I'm repeating myself all the time for these beautiful retakes, but it seems to be the name of the game in this first half here, Lex, where they're okay with letting Equinox move into the site and then just fight it back. But what changed a little bit for Gen.G into that round is always going to be Sean and Win working together at the beginning. They went a little bit of a TSM style where TSM likes to push Wardell up towards long C, then they watch the angle so they cover the rest of the map. Well, they did exactly the same thing with Win and Sean, which allowed them to play that easy your rotation on that B side in the end. Right. Getting that freedom of movement, that early information, being able to stack yep. towards bomb sites is always one of those strengths where if you are playing retake, you leave yourself open to, you know, surprise bomb plants, of course. But it allows you on in other places on the map to take map control to press where you maybe maybe normally wouldn't, you mm -hmm. know, and, and this is you know, time after time we're seeing Gen G capitalize on that and, and the real test has come down to retake, of course. Here we are with a staunch hold coming out from Mikael with three excellent kills. And obviously, this is not a pie coming out from Equinox, but these kills are so important to just clean this up for Gen G. Win finds one, and now it's just DXN and 1v3 with it all to do. And a round where, uh, you know, maybe they weren't expecting to win, but certainly keeping the economy in check 
keeping an operator out of the hands of Win is certainly important for Equinox now against Gen.G and there they are. Kicks in. Unlikely to clutch this, but finds the first be able to clean it up. Uh, nice round from Equinox, I think, to get three kills out, but it's not exactly going to put Gen G in a situation the where they're no. struggling economically on the last round, so it's not enough. Uh, but, you know, Equinox looking to tie this up 6-6 six, six and a half, man, silly. This is, this this is looking this to be a close game. I don't know what actually happened there for Equinox when they actually busted into the A side with that mixed buy that they got. They took control of that site. Even though it's a three versus two in favor of Gen.G, you still have Pancakes that was on a mission to try to pick up a weapon instead of planning the spike and allowing like a retake play or a crossfire no hold. Despite only on. having a Bucky, it's still good enough for a right pick at the range that he's at to maybe get a headshot here or there. But win to start this round, already drops a spike carrier. So a first kill, a second one courtesy of Sean. It seems as though in this best round of three, we're always going to call these two players out first. But Deepak, looking to retaliate, immediately gets canceled on that running back inside garage. And Pancakes went from the shadows inside the spawn for the rotation, gets two kills, which opens up the A site. What does that mean? Trying to book it back towards the A site. Now we break the trap wire towards B2. They know the site technically should be open at this point as they're covering their grounds, dropping outside of heaven. Deepak Cop card in from defender's side, and now it's going to be a hard retake for Gen G. So, as much as we're talking about how Gen G is doing well on his retake, there's still a possibility to end this six to six on that. Spike planted. Yeah, something that's really impressing me with Equinox right now is how well they are in control of their movement around the map. They seem to be moving as a as a unit, as a pack, and not only the trades being, you know, uh, I'll I'll, cl I'll claim at some level that these trades are are always going to be favoring the attackers. But for Gen.G playing the retake style that they are right now, this is a three-on-three, -three, totally winnable for either side. Uh, and, I, and I think this is this is the probably one of the most important rounds of the half right here is whether or not Equinox can eke out a sixth round. Retake coming in now. Well, Pancakes jumps out, or should I say, player one jumped out. Win moving forward, and he's looking for the ace. He connects wow. with the ace for a big round needed for Equinox, and Pancakes delivers in spades. Switching you know what, sides. Man, that, that, that round started out with Mina getting picked off. And so when you when you have somebody who is that impactful in the rounds that you're winning, uh, he's only at 10 to 8, but I think I see him yeah. on first blood most of the time. But him getting picked right there, I was like, this is Gen G's round to win. The pancakes with a huge ace. Man, with, with the, from the shadows, with the flank, I mean, there's nothing more he could ask for. I think at that point for Gen G, how did they allow him to actually make it all the way back towards spawn side with the first one? And the second one were caught off guard, rotating out from the A side. I think there was a miscommunication as to where did you guys hear that from the shadows? We don't hear it anywhere from our positions. Let's guess that it's or for information or for the spawn. And there you go. You see Mikael, he ran out and never really expected Pancakes to be out in the open at the spawn site, defender spawn, to get that round. 17 and 6. Make that 18 and 6. Oh my goodness. This man is lighting it up. Finds one on Amina to start. That's a huge first kill. Gen G pressing the safe bomb site. Decop feeling the heat, tossing some of his own right back at him. Able to delay just in time for a retake to come in. I'm sorry, a uh, rotator. And now there's three players on the bomb site. Decop will fall, but Gen G is having second thoughts about the A bomb site now. With a 4v3 advantage, know that on Haven especially, they can go anywhere they want. Yeah. He was pinned at that point towards that sewer. I do understand why he keeps going for that jiggle peek. Trying to take down as many as he can before he falls down himself. Because no matter what angle he's going to fall Shadows or traveling. take the corner of, and Equinox allows that rotate, there's an opportunity that, or, or this opportunity where they don't get information anymore, but he takes through the dark cover to right click of the classic burst gets two kills to even it up on a two versus two. Cute fat boy right now spike waiting planted. for his teammate to rotate as the spike is planted. Spike but he's in a great spot to get his first kill and the second oh. quick tap in the face of Sean. And now they're coming back. He's going to get the trap wire, save a little bit of money into the next round. But that is a big pistol for them to win. Those are four crispy headshots to end the round. You have the two burst fire frags and then two fat boy <laughs> lining them up. Those frags are oh so enjoyable when they land the one taps. And uh, that's, considering how that round started, I am impressed by Equinox once again, their ability to claw back into these rounds at a deficit. Gen G now. Probably, I wouldn't imagine that they're going to force into this on attack side Haven, but they are popping a little bit of light armor, maybe. We'll see. But, uh, you know, this is, this is a long, you got a lot of rounds left to play, I think, for Gen G. Mm -hmm. This is not at all the end of the world losing this pistol. And, uh, and I think it's going to be uh, telling whether or not 
you know, th these next two rounds, they're going to be able to find some weaknesses in Equinox's defense with these pistols. Yeah. Uh, they but otherwise, I don't, I don't necessarily see them being a team that, uh, you know, I, of course we see it now. Pancakes on the B-bomb site. Back coming in. Line goes out. Ooh. First kill's getting traded back and forth. Not really clear. They're not going to be on the bomb site. Nope, falling back. Resetting once more. And Equinox just willing to bind their time a little bit. Not pressing down, chasing after these kills at all. Cute fat boy requesting assistance over at the C bomb site. Finds all three in front of him now. <laughs> they are just trying to mess with him in these cages, making the noises, trying to act like they're pressing through, and he's not. Not going to buy it. 8 6, a clean anti eco from Equinox. Well played by them. And uh, here's really where the, the half starts to begin, Vantilly. Yeah, and even if Q Fatboy doesn't get any kills on that three-man push, he's done his job to actually allow his teammates to rotate at the same time. But now, even though this is a gun round for Gen.G, this is still going to be a bonus for Equinox. They're not actually upgrading to any Phantoms. They have a lot of money to work with into the next round. And with these dominating two rounds that they just had on that first half, on their first two rounds of this half, they're comfortable to keep what they have as that bonus and also to allow Mina possibly to get an op an operator into the next. My question mark is going to be in that real gun round coming through. Should Genji win this one now? How are the executions are going to go? Because they're playing a lot of retakes versus Equinox, but are they going to be as clean on the attack when they're trying to take oversights? Yeah, I mean, that that question will be even murkier once we get an op on the on, into the hands of Mina, or yeah. or even just ops in general on the side of Equinox. But you know, for now at least. You know, Decop kind of struggling over there in the first half, being the entry fragger. Sometimes it goes that way, but getting pressured over here at Long A, it's not like he doesn't know that they're already up near the ramp. The rotations are there. Don't know why he didn't. Three shoot. players from Equinox on site now. Yeah, he went for the he went for the jiggle peek. Saw him, but never really reacted. But still manages to get the kill onto Win through the dark cover at Long A. So that's going to force Genji to uh, to actually backpedal towards the spawn side. While you do have one lurking towards the garage, maybe to eventually take control of the C side once again. But now that B is open, this is the perfect play for Genji. They just have to act a little bit faster so that they can actually take control of the site left. on this four versus two. As they have the defense split right now with DXN stuck in the window, now he gets spotted Shock and he's dark. just going to look for the shock darts to slow him down and there's that immediate rotate it's area. gonna be very hard right now for Gen G to try to take over the site by the same hand these kills need to go the way of Equinox if they hold it at all but the kill comes left. out the time is ticking will go down and now we're at a 2v2 situation Mean over here at Garage is so dangerous picks up the still remain. relatively healthy but PL1 gets the better of him and now there's a crossfire on the bomb site pancakes with it all to do I don't necessarily think he's gonna you know, push out here and find a kill and be able to clutch this out. But I think he will. This is a question of whether or not you want to keep the bonus weapon at all. Maybe go for the Phantom and save it. He doesn't care. He's going to press in either way. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's just a tough spot. You know, you, your, your teammate just spotted one on default, one at long C. And you got to be thinking, you know, at that point, you want to get just at least get a kill, maybe get That's a gun right. if you can, even if you're not going to win the round. That's right. But, you know, being over there in the garage is just a tough spot. So no no harm, no foul for him going for that and losing the, the SMG at all. Because look at the buy that they have right now for Gen G, right? Lex, if he had, was able to get, actually get a deal with the Spectre, despite him still losing a round, they're still looking to buy where the economy is very broken for Gen G. Maybe even at that point, force two or three submachine guns into this buy. Now there's still a glimpse of hope for Gen G to overtake this round and tie it to an 8 8. But like we mentioned before, now the op is out for Equinox, where it gets a little bit harder for Gen G to take this ground control, this map control, where they don't allow Win himself to be wielded with an op. Yeah, because they don't have one of their own. I mean, they, they know their <laughs> GMD gets picked off, and, and here it is. No this smoke. Is, this is what I'm saying with the, with how murky it can get. There, you can clearly see they're being extremely careful. They're being very timely and, and patient with their default, making sure that they're clearing these angles. But, you know, having an off death like GMD on the other side of the map over at Long C, where it, it kind of seems unnecessary to me anyway. Yep. Now we're looking at a 5 v sight push. Uh, uh, he's just got to frag out. Here comes Sean, picking up two. Pancakes lines them up, finds two of his own, and now it's a 2v2 retake scenario. Equinox on the back foot, but Mina Spike and planted. Cute Fat Boy remaining on the side are, are two players that I expect are, are going to go for this and have a real shot of winning this round. Mikael over here on the bomb site is uh, still possessing his ultimate. So, so for Sova to be on the bomb site, it kind of makes it a little useless for him to have that. One enemy remaining. 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 One enemy remaining
stands tall over at short. 1v1 now, Mina. Oh Did he get duped by the smoke? Yep. <laughs> what does. a play. Oh my goodness. I couldn't honestly tell whether or not Mina had seen his gun barrel poke into that smoke. It looked yeah. like he may have been posted on it. Honestly, my breath was baited certainly there. And now, 8-8, eight to eight, Equinox. You know, I think for Gen G, keeping their economy in this round is really the, the big headline, right? Like, you yep. were talking a yep. little bit about, you know, whether or not Wynn was going to be able to get it off in the last round, and they were not. He has mm -hmm. it now. And yep. now they've got four rifles coming out. Otherwise, this would have been a, a disastrous 1v1 loss or win for Genji. And suddenly they're doing just fine. This is a healthy half, and Equinox is feeling like they need to force a little bit of uh, utility. Out. Late farm, though, it's stopped by Win. And that means it's going to be so hard for Q-Sabboy to get something done. He lines up at least the crosshair, but it's still Sean that gets the entry into the site. That means now the last three players, I mean, they have ultimates to work with, but I doubt that they're going to use them for the amount of that they have in terms of the arsenal to try to play this retake. So you want to try to hurt the Ecom back towards Gen G. So while this garbage time happens on this five versus three, I wanted to mention that Cover even though they lost GMD on that last round, you couldn't ask for a better scenario for Gen G to take over that site because they actually made it with no smokes. Here comes the curveball. Nice turn by a player of one, but he gets dropped, which allows right now for Decom to probably save uh, the Phantom that's left behind. And into this round here, it's decent, I guess, if you're making out of it with the Phantom. Yeah, you see them both backpedaling. You take a Stinger at the same time because Decop is still looking for an opportunity for another exit. But Gen G are going to be able to put this on a 9 to 8. And one more thing to add here, Lex, that one versus one on that previous round from Win versus Mina. That's such a big balls play because technically on a one versus one, the way that I saw that smoke, it's I don't think I would have walked in it myself because it was so thin that a bad timing, I would have been immediately spotted trying to walk into the smoke. But the hey. timing was perfect where he was able to play and also uh, juke Mina. Fair. I mean, fortune favors the bold right there, man. He, <laughs> just having the, the confidence to just walk through that. It, it worked out and it got him in awe, right? Like that was yeah, like, okay, yeah. I win the 1v1, I win the round, I win the economy battle, and I get a free operator. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for your time. And now we're looking at Mina finally getting back onto a gun round and he's lacking an operator despite the fact that they saved a weapon the last round. And Win has already shown that he can be Joke's extremely over. deadly You're with these dead. openings. So, uh, you know, Equinox is not able to play the game that they would probably like to be playing right now. And Decop. Trying to find an opening no with this Phoenix, trying to have an impact in this game, and, and simply not being able to is tragic in its own right. Kangbase getting pressured hard. So no far. I know he missed uh, an omen TP to the back of the bomb site. Gen G getting awarded immediately, stuck in a choke point over at Long C. You have a counter Hunter's Fury to come out to, but it doesn't seem to take anybody else down here from Gen G. Sean does have the Empress, so they could still try to press forward if they want to, especially this camera that's fully up here towards this long C is still scouting towards garage, scouting towards back site. Even the smoke that comes out, he could be like, look, there's one person towards that back, let's try to take advantage of it. But the Empress now has ticked down, and Gen G, after that dark cover, might decide to fall back at this point. But you see it from Equinox, how passively they're playing it still. They're still having two players playing towards A, they don't want to rotate yet. They're still giving a lot of respect for Gen G, where they know that two players, the key players for Gen G so far, are still alive in the hands of Sean and up here. It's this mid camera. I mean, just knowing 30 that, seconds left. You yeah. know, for the side of Equinox, that Gen G is still probably over at Long C, and there it is. Sean finding the opening of a D cop. Here it is. The C push comes in. Four on four. Ult gets popped by the Gen. We will find one of the pain case for that huge kill at backside. PL1 trades out win. And now it's a 3v2, 10 seconds, 10 seconds left as the bomb gets planted. Gen G now. Post plant Choked situation. Up. Need to hold fast against Mina and DXN. Walking into the bomb site now is this jet clearing logs, clearing default. But there are two players over there towards Long C. You only have one more cloud burst on this jet. Bomb gets tapped. Sean falls to a nice cheeky angle from DXN, but now you're stuck in between a, two different players that have already put it's you in a situation over. where the, the time's ticking. There's not a whole lot left for you to do here, DXN, but he's still attempting, perhaps be able to just find a kill, get a free one here, and ultimately one survive this round, and I just don't know how he's going to do it. Just find one, finds the operator, but Mikael has already wrapped around through that garage window. Cleans it up, 10-8. Gen G now taking the, I think this is their first two-round lead of the game, right? Separation by, by two. So for them to be in a situation now where they have a full economic advantage over, you know, Equinox and, and this looking like it could be an eco from them.
Yeah. Uh, this is a strong and commanding position for Gen G to be in this late in the game. Well, we tried to figure out how Gen G were going to play the attacker side. How good would it be once they have the guns in? And they're doing quite well. Despite them losing players early into the round, they still had the firepower to be able to get into the sights no matter what. And again, it's off the back of Sean. You saw how they lost a player early? Well, he still got the entry into the seaside, even if they had three players holding that site to start things off. And they still went for that site just because they're comfortable of having this man at the helm. So he's going to follow just behind the Silver Drone. Mina definitely is going to get spotted at this point. He's going for the white swing and hopefully dash away. And Mina is not actually affected by the paranoia, but again, unfortunately, Decoff. He's like, you know what? We're going to bait it out. I'm going to try to peek out, but he pays the price. Mina now yeah. stuck and low Ooh. on HP. Still manages to get the top rider for Gen G. Target to get it out. Can the right click come forward with the Bucky? It does so for one. It does Ooh. get the dink onto the second, but not enough for the kill. You saw them both at low HP in the end here for a win in GMD. But definitely you see that the attackers take the round and they're looking to run away with this first map. You know, for a moment there, and I don't know whether these are perfect reads coming out for Equinox or, or if they're just playing the game uh, proactively, I guess you could say. They're stacking towards yeah. the bomb site on an eco. It's per perfectly reasonable to do that. But we've seen that a few times around where they have the pieces in the right place. Yep. And Genji saw Mikael send his drone, owl drone, up short and uh, into the A bomb site. He sees the stack and they're all five there, not committed. And they're like, you know what? Uh, we're, we are going to outshoot them. We're going to overpower them. We have the better weapons. We're going to use teamwork and we're going to take the bomb site, even if it means we have to trade you out. Yep. And they do that exactly. It, it, almost, it basically comes out to a clean round almost for Gen G. 11 to 8 now. Uh, Mina gets an operator back in his possession. And to me, I mean, you know, I, I'm not so sure how I feel about uh, the operator nerfs in terms of it, its economic price, but it certainly has made a little bit more interesting to see the impact that it has in these games because the economy has just not been in Equinox's favor, so this is the only second time that we'll see him wielding it. Yeah. Now, will it have an impact will be yet to be seen, but uh, I think this is part of the, the key, Cover going key to success probably for Equinox to, to succeed here on defense. Fans I love this. I love this. It was such a deep cyber cage towards long A. But they still decide not to push that fast because they wanted to take advantage of the cyber cage to have PL1 put a camera up towards sewers. And because of that, Mina was spotted. They force him out of position where he turtles inside the site. And look at how much control Gen G has now for the execution towards the A site. And they have everybody alive to do it. Here comes the smokes, and it's an Shadow open site for them to take. I love this right now. For the Smoke comes out, and Mina's rendered useless up there with the operator. And so, free bomb site for Gen G. And, uh, you know, you gotta oh. be <laughs> almost <laughs> I got a free planted. haircut from above, but <laughs> did not happen. I would have lost it on the stream. That's all right. The retake is still due. Paranoid comes in, flashes come out. BL1 holds fast at hell, but feelings. the kills are coming back and forth, and Genji maintains their advantage over me on Blue now. But Mina and Q Fat Boy have other plans and another opportunity for Mina picking up three on the retake. Wow, Equinox is looking a little tough to beat here. Yeah, impressive stuff from Mina especially. That was, I mean, on a razor's edge at multiple times throughout that round where he was perhaps either going to be in the right place at the right time or caught out completely. And, and unfortunately for the side of Gen G, he made all the right decisions there in that retake. Well played to Equinox. And this is where you're finally seeing a little bit of moment of salvation for Decop as well. Give it to Gen G to be able to nullify Decoff's utility when they're trying to take the attacker side for Equinox. But thankfully for somebody like Mina, somebody like Pancakes, they allowed to get these rounds and try to make this game super close on the first half. But then you saw on that retake, Shadow even though he only got one kill, that was a perfect curveball to allow his teammates to move in and go for that double frag into lower hell as well towards that A slide and then allow for them to take the round. So the frags don't really matter at that point. Of course, it, it'd be nice if they had it. If, if Decal could pop off, it'd probably be a one-sided story for Equinox so far. But at least his yeah, utility is way. working definitely towards the defender's side. But now you see this execution oh. coming in from Gen G. Shock darts towards the back. Cute fat boy, down his 54. He almost ate that second bolt. And here comes that push forward. He's still in the correct angle, but they still expect it for Generation G. I don't even know if it's called Generation G at that point, but who cares? Tiger Nation moves inside the site, they get the spike down, spike and they're looking planted. to get this 12th round. In. One enemy Huge flash from Decop, but it's not, it just doesn't matter. Okay, Mina does trade it out, but Mikael finds the frag regardless. And now it's a one on two, and, and for 
Or Mina, obviously you have the operator in your hands. Your economy hasn't been great throughout this half, but this is this is putting the your opponents on <laughs> on match. <laughs> that on camera's match staring up forever. Clutch. That camera was just like, say geez. Yep. Mina's yep, gonna tap bomb. The question is, do they spam him down in time? And yes, okay, PL1 will clean it up. Uh, you know what? That is a tough call, especially if you're mean in that situation to Match like, point. okay, do I go for it? This is almost unwinnable. Do I save my weapon? Because if you yeah. check the economy of Equinox now, you you just gave your opponent match point and all, all the weapons that they could want, right? And you don't have yeah. nothing to, to share, show for it. Uh, it's just one of those things where it kind of is unfortunate the way the, the rounds have, have come out for Equinox. You know, they, yep. they've definitely not been underplaying their performance. They seem to be winning a lot of rounds. A couple of these down to a 1v1, right? Where, where they were, they're winning their clutches, but it seems like these rounds where the, the retakes and the five-man plays coming out from Gen G are just a little bit stronger than what we saw at the attack side from Equinox, which yep. is obviously being shown now on the scoreboard. Even no then on a two versus one, the debate was for Mina. It's like, look, I already caught my blade for him. I'm trying to find those opponents, but I'm trying to no win that two versus one. But it was just that camera that was enough to just waste all that time. But here comes the Emperor's Pop and a Hunter's Fury to take one down. So that's a seaside open. Sean's going to keep moving forward. He does have a Leer to work with. He sees one's jumping across. He goes for the free fire, and he's just going to press it forward. He's going to probably get the ult, and he's also going to get the kill on the DSN. Right now there's going to be one at spawn, and that was going to be the last fire. But he come up low front. Dragger cannot get one of this round for Genji, and they take the first map 13 to 9 <laughs> over Equinox on their map pick. GG Genji. Impressive stuff. <laughs> but I think both those teams were, were showing off their strategic prowess a little bit, especially we saw uh, Equinox kind of raising some eyebrows with the strategic decisions and actually having it pay off because clearly they were doing their homework. And so that was cool to see. But for me, I think the takeaways there, and, and I, I think maybe you'll agree with me on this, is you have a really strong Mina and some of the supporting cast there. We have Pancake stepping up late in the game. Yep. You know, those are great starting points for, for being a tier one top roster in North America. But Equinox is still figuring out the rest of the players in the roster, finding their roles and trying to, you know, develop their own talent. So well played to them, but it was not quite enough, obviously, to overcome the likes of Gen G and and Gen G played a fantastic game. Yeah, what I do like from Equinox, though, is that when this team got picked up by Equinox themselves being trying to win before, they were always winning like tier two events and their first real text test, sorry, really started coming in towards the Renegades Invitational where they kind of bombed out, right? Because I think maybe it's the pressure of being signed by an organization that just focuses on Valorant and that pressure could be there. But then we saw how Equinox is doing pretty decently in the qualifier being able to beat phase for example on a 2-1 series and now they continue with this big test because they're playing the top team the top team teams in north america right now and the true test shines and i think they still have a result of a 6-6 six, six on a half from the way that they played on the attack it's still something that you should be proud of but with that though i think we're going to take a break and when we come back bach is going to be back and we're going to break down that first half so don't go anywhere maybe not i might have thrown it well, off I just <laughs>